How did it happen? How did it happen? How did I stop reading my Bible? How did I get involved in this mess that I'm in? How did I quit church and all the rest? In recent days, I've become very alarmed, folks, of some situations that's happening in people's lives. How did I get to this place of depression that I feel like there's a cloud over my head? I'm going to tell you how it happens. It happens subtly. It isn't fast. And the Bible talks about it will happen even more so before the Lord comes. Would you take your Bible and turn to the book of Luke, chapter 21. I'm going to try to help you this morning because as a pastor, I see things that you don't ever see or you don't know that are happening in people's lives. Of course, I can't not bring those things out in regards to who they refer to. But I get telephone calls all the time, situations that are just beyond my ability to deal with. They really have to be dealt with from the Lord. But how does a person get to that place that they throw their hands up in the air and say, I'm going to quit. I just can't fight this anymore. Well, I believe the Lord is very clear in illustration as well as uh, the verses he gives us in the Bible. And I want to start with our main scripture this morning, Luke 21, down through verse number 8. Deceptions face. What does deception look like? Deception takes on many faces. And I hope that I can point some of those out this morning that you might be possibly facing. Because maybe you're ready to throw in the towel. Maybe you're ready to quit. Maybe you're ready just to sit down and say, it's all over. I know of folks who are now that are covering their heads up and don't want to get out of bed. What has brought that on? One word. Deception. And I'm going to try to explain the best I can this morning from Scripture how you and I can avoid being deceived by the devil. Because, folks, it's going to happen. Look here at Luke chapter 21. And he looked up and saw the rich man casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites. Now, you could read those first couple of verses and say, what in the world does this have to do with deception? Because wrong perception leads to deception. Would you say that with me? Wrong perception leads to deception. Now, look back at verse 3. And he said, of a truth, I say unto you that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. Now he's using an illustration to get to in verse 8. So pay close attention. Look at verse 4. For all these have of their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God, but she of her penury hath cast in all the living that she had. And as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, As for these things which you behold, once again, perception, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these, these things shall come to pass? Read verse 8 with me. And he said, Take heed that you be not what? Deceived. Say it again. Deceived. Deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. Deception is an awful thing to be caught up into. I hope that you will not be deceived because of the fact 
of so many turning away. I just uh, heard the other day of this lady I and you for years that's been turned into a false religion. She's gone into that thing. She's been deceived. How do I know she's deceived? Because they deny that Jesus is the Son of God. They, they deny He is God. Now, I've preached about that recently. And I've showed you from Hebrews chapter 1 how He is God and many other verses. But how can a person be caught up in that? I mean, they believed in the uh, principles of God's Word and now they're caught up into a false cult. They've been deceived. And you and I can be deceived if we believe a lie. Deception has many faces. So Walter Scott said this almost 200 years ago. He said, Oh, what a tangled web we weave when we first we practice to deceive. In 1992, there was a book called The Day America Told the Truth found that 91% of people lie routinely about things we consider trivial. 86% of children regularly lie to their parents. 65% of married people lie to their spouses regularly. We lie about our weight. We lie... Oh, man. <laughs> we lie about our age. We lie about our income. And we could go on and on. You see, some people are deceived so easily. Why? Because they don't know the truth. Brother Ed said something this morning. He gave the illustration that uh, those who identify counterfeiting, they study the real McCoy rather than studying the counterfeit bill, whatever it might be. The more you study this book, the more you're going to be able to identify the false. And the Bible talks about a lot of falseness and false teachers that will enter into the world. I was reading an illustration this past week, and a, a young man, he went shopping in, uh, at the grocery store, and after he collected all the items he wanted to get, he went up to the register there where they were checking out, and... Uh, he took, and as he was standing there unloading his cart after the lady who was in front of him, he noticed the lady just kept staring at him. And pretty soon it got the best of him, and he looked at the lady and says, um, uh, you've been looking at me quite frequently. Is there a problem? And the lady looked at him and says, uh, you look so much like my son, who just died. He says, I'm very sorry that you've lost a loved one. She says, it's hard for me to get over this. I was just wondering, would you do me a favor? He says, well, I'll try my best. She says, I'm having a hard time having closure for my son dying. When I leave the store, will you call me mother? He said, sure. I'd be glad to do that. So as the lady finished checking out before he had, the, had all his items uh, rung up and so forth, the woman begins to walk out. And as she does, he says, Bye, Mother! And as she goes on out of the store, finally the cash, uh, the, the lady, uh, you know, cash there uh, uh, checking him out, added up all his items, and the items came up to $147. And he says, wait a minute, ma'am. He says, I just have a few items. How in the world did my items take and add up to $147? And he says, well, your mother said that you would pay for them. <laughs> we can be deceived so easily if we're not careful. Situations deceive us. People deceive us. And we got to be aware. 
You see, Satan wants your perception to be based upon deception. And if you don't have the truth, you're going to be deceived every single time. You see, Satan is a master of trigonometry. He's a master at tricking you and me. Matter of fact, would you turn your Bible to the book of Deuteronomy, excuse me, the book of Ephesians chapter 6. I got Deuteronomy on my brain today for some reason. Ephesians chapter 6, if you would. <coughs> excuse me. And I want you to read in verse number 10 with me to begin with. And we'll read down a few verses and I'll tell you when we're going to stop. But let's begin at verse number 10 of Ephesians 6. Here we go. Everyone together out loud. Finally, my brethren, be strong in what? Now, stop right there. Your perception will be completely different when you're strong in the Lord. You know why? Listen to this. James 1.5. If any man lack wisdom, the word wisdom is spiritual insight, or looking at things from God's perspective. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. You and I, if we're going to overcome the deception because of our perception, we have to look at things from God's perspective rather than our own. And so he says, be strong in the Lord. Now say the next part with me. And in the power of his what? His might. Now look on. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the what, folks? Wiles of the devil. The wiles is his trickery. And the greatest weapon or, uh, in the arsenal of the devil is the matter of deception. And if you don't have the truth, the truth will set you free. But if you don't have the truth, you're going to be brought into deception and bondage by the devil. God does not want that for your life. That's why he says, if you know the truth, the truth will make you free. A man by the name of Joseph Goebbels, Adolf Hitler's propaganda minister, made this statement. If you tell a big enough lie and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. And that's true. The devil will keep telling you something over and over and over again. You're not good enough. God doesn't love you. Look what you've done now. Look at that stupid thing that you did. And he keeps saying it and keeps saying it. You begin to perceive, oh, I'm really not as good as I thought I was. And by the way, none of us are good enough to get to heaven in ourselves. Amen. That's why Jesus had to die for you. You see, this matter of perception will keep you from deception when you look into the Word of God. Now, look at verse number 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the, against the rules of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Let me ask you a question. Do you know why Eve was deceived. Now listen very carefully. Eve lived in the most perfect situation anyone could ever live in. Why or how in the world was she deceived? Because she believed a lie. She believed that God really didn't care, or should I say, was holding back on them. She perceived that God was not giving her the best. I mean, after all, he said, of all these things you shall eat of the trees, but of the tree of knowledge, good and evil, you shall not eat it. For in the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Did she believe God? Oh, she believed what the devil said, and the devil said she gave, he gave her a lie. Deception 
is a lie from the devil. And the devil wants you to believe that. He wants you to be turned away from God. He doesn't want you to live in the freedom that he wants you to have. Matter of fact, the very word deceive means to cause to believe what is not true. Are you listening? Deception simply means to cause you to believe what is not true. And folks, if Satan can make you believe something that is not true, then he can control yours and my life. If I were to ask you this morning, all you that want Satan to control your life, raise your hand. I don't think there would be one hand raised in here. Can I hear an amen? Amen. But that's exactly what happens in your life when you begin to believe the lies the devil wants to throw at your life. He wants you to be deceived. In the book of Titus chapter 3, the Bible talks about us all being deceived sometime or other. This preacher can be deceived. I've had pastor friends who have been deceived. And finally, many of their eyes have been opened, but some of them are still closed. In Titus 3, 3, it says, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy and hateful and hating one another. You see, the devil wants to get you to the place that he captivates your perception and then deceives you with a lie. And folks, if he had the audacity to do that to Adam and Eve, he surely not going to be reserved to do it to you and me. Deception. Take your Bible very quickly and turn to the book of Mark, chapter 13. Mark, chapter 13. I am concerned about you and I'm concerned about others today. They're being deceived. And by the way, folks, I can be just as vulnerable as you if I don't stick with the book. That's the reason I tell you from time to time, stick with the book, stick with biblical principles that are going to lead your life in the right direction. Now think about this. The Word of God warns you and me of many dangerous deceptions. And I'm going to start here in Mark chapter 13 very quickly and read verse 5 and 6. Listen to it. And Jesus answered them and began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. Now, in the original Greek, that word man is not there. It's put only in for the emphasis sake. You'll notice in your Bible, it's in the italics. It means simply be careful, don't be deceived by anything because anything that comes down the road clothed in a lie's clothing is going to be deceptive. Now look at the next verse. He says, For many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive how many? Many. Now we don't have a number there because all of us could be included in that. And so God warns us over and over. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 it says, But I fear lest by any means as a servant beguiled Eve through the subtlety so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Now watch this. The first thing he's going to do is get a hold of your mind. Now, how can we prevent that? Take your Bible and turn to the book of Philippians chapter 4 very quickly. Philippians chapter 4. And look at verse number 8. Matter of fact, let's go back to verse 7. It kind of gives us the springboard for that verse. It says in verse 7 of Philippians chapter 4, And the peace of God which passeth on understanding shall keep your hearts and what? Minds. How? Through Christ Jesus. Now, verse 8 tells us how that mind can be manipulated into your thinking. And here it is. Look at verse 8. He says, Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are what? Stop right there and dwell for a few seconds. Anything that's not true is deceptive. 
Can I hear an amen? Amen. Be careful of listening to lies or even telling lies yourself. He says, what sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things... Well, let's stop right there for a second. We live in a polluted society and everything that's coming down the road, we're grabbing at it. Folks, immorality has always been wrong. Amen. It's wrong. It's sinful. It's deceptive. God says, don't let the devil plant a lie into your mind. Well, this is okay. No, if it's against the biblical principles of God's word, it's wrong. It will lead you down the wrong road. Now, go back to the scripture. He goes on to say, what sort of things are lovely, what sort of things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, say the last four words with me. Think on these things. You see, God warns us through the Bible about this matter of deception. The Bible says in Jeremiah 14, 14, Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. Oh, what are you saying there, preacher? Well, let me just get down to the nitty gritty. Excuse me. I'm going to trip on that thing this morning, and then you're going to have a preacher that's out of the commission. There are preachers that are lying to you. They're not giving you the truth. That's why you ought to carry your Bible. You know, there's a lot of churches today, they don't say, carry your Bible with you. I hope you got your Bible this morning and proved this preacher out. If the Bible, if, if the devil can knock the Bible out of your hands, you're destroyed. That's the only way Jesus there in Matthew chapter 4 was able to defeat the devil by quoting Scripture. When you and I use the Word of God, we can't go wrong. We can't be deceived. And here he gives us this warning in Jeremiah. He says, I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. You better be careful who you're listening to over the radio, the TV, or any church that you might attend. You better make sure that that preacher is preaching, thus saith the word of God. Can I hear an amen? amen? And if this preacher ever goes out of line according to the word of God, you come and tell him. And fire me. God gives us warning about this matter of deception. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked who can know it. You see, it's so easy to be deceived because of wrong perception. God wants us to have the right perception. And God gives us a warning in his word. Hebrews eleven twenty five 25 says, The pleasures of sin for a short time. Sin appears to be a good for a, a while, and then... It takes you in its grips. Take the warning from the Word of God that you keep yourself from being deceived. But wait a minute, there's a second thing. Things which can deceive you. I briefly mentioned just a few seconds ago about the matter of sin. Every sin, are you listening? Every sin is a fruit of deception. Because sin will destroy your life. Hello? Amen. God warns us against it. And you and I must take heed to what God says. Uh, here, here's, here's something. I won't get caught. I've noticed, Brother Brad, no matter where I go, it seems like somebody knows me. I mean, I go to another state, and boy, I think, I don't know anybody around here. And I pop around the corner. Oh, hey, hey, I know you. You and I, the Bible tells us, be sure your sin, come on, will find you out. You can't get away with sin. Sin, when it's sold, will bring forth death, the book of James tells us. Uh, 
This will gratify me. Oh yeah, temporarily it will. But after a while, it could be bring destruction to you or your family. Uh, this will make me happiness. Happiness is not to be compared with what the Bible talks about, the principle of joy. Happiness, are you listening? Happiness, young people, is based upon the principle of happenings. Joy is based upon the principle of God and His Word. God warns us. God does not want you to be deceived. You see, it's so easy to be caught up in things that will take away the joy of the Lord. I don't have to obey. Yeah, rebellion is, is the sin of witchcraft, the Bible tells us. God lays things out there for you and me that we won't be deceived. We won't be caught up. You see, we can be deceived about our communications. We can be deceived about the things that we watch. It won't hurt me. Oh, come and let me counsel with you for a few hours and I'll tell you how bad it's hurt you. I do it all the time. You be careful about what you watch on the computer and on TV. There are a lot of people's lives being destroyed because of things they're having come over those avenues. We can be deceived about our actions. We can be deceived about our choices. Oh, this won't hurt me this time. If the Bible gives you a warning about it, it will hurt you. It could destroy you. It could take away your livelihood. It could take away your family. It could take away anything of your life and destroy you because you've been deceived. We can be deceived about what we do in life. You see, Ananias and Sapphira thought it was okay to do what they did. You know the story? One well, of the book of Acts will briefly say they, they wanted the pat on the back. Now, there's nothing wrong with patting people on the back. I, I appreciate when people do something good. Amen? Amen? But if you do something, you make God a promise, and you go back on your word, you've been deceived. And that's exactly what Ananias and Sapphira did, and they died an early death. You can read about there in the book of Acts, chapter 5. We can be deceived about ourselves. Would you take your Bible very quickly and turn to 1 Corinthians? I'm just about done, so don't get shaky. Don't look at your calendar. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Look down at verse number 18, if you would, please. Whoop. I must have, I wrote this wrong. Let me see if it's 2 Corinthians, real quick. Sometimes I make mistakes. First one this week. No, I must have put the wrong thing down. But we can be deceived about ourselves. Please excuse me. I'm okay, preacher. I don't smoke and I don't chew and I don't date those girls that do, you know. I'm pretty good. You know, I do the best I can. I'll, I'll make it to heaven, you know. Uh, Jesus said, lest you be born again, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. We can deceive ourselves so easily by our thinking. We can be deceived about eternal life. The rich young ruler, for example, there in Luke chapter 18, he was deceived. And you'll find that record in all four Gospels because the Lord wanted to really drive that point home about eternal life. Eternal life is only through Jesus Christ. You're not going to get to heaven by something you might do, pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps or turning over a new leaf or, you know, doing good to your neighbor. And all those things are good, but they won't get you to heaven. Deception can be corrected through hearing what God has to say. Now look up here. Adam and Eve knew what God said, but they didn't hear him. When, when you were a kid and you were sitting in front of the TV or you were outside or whatever and, you, and your mother called or your dad called, you, he, you, could hear what, you could hear him, but you didn't hear him. I remember sometimes my mother had to come in and literally grab a hold of us and says, it's time to eat. Of course, then I said, good. I was ready to eat. 
But deception is hearing his voice. In the book of Hebrews, and I'll not have you turn there because of time. But in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5, it says this. Let your conversation be without covenants and be content with such things you have. For he, for he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. When you begin to get down in the dumps, when you become depressed, when you have that shadow or that uh, dark uh, cloud hanging over your head, remember, Jesus is right there with you. Amen. And he can lift you up. He can put your feet back on a solid rock again. You see, the devil wants to deceive you and me. He wants to get us off track. He wants us to take and follow what God has for our lives. And most of all, he wants you to go away from the truth that Jesus came for one reason. Are you listening? Luke 19, 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. He came for that one purpose. I'm glad also he came to be our example in faith, word, and deed. That we would know how to live now. And that's why he gave us this book. Oh, blessed book of ages, how I love thy pages. Do you love God's word? Amen. Well, here's what will happen. Thy word have I hid, come on, say it with me, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And folks, when you take this book, you will memorize it. You will live by it. I'm not talking about super spiritual. I'm talking about the normal Christian life. The devil cannot deceive you. And I could give many illustrations in the Bible where the devil deceived people. Don't let him deceive you. Don't let him deceive you this morning by saying, I know I need to be saved, but I'll do it next Sunday. Guess what? You said that for a year now. You said it for two years. I know. I was there. And I said over and over again, I'll do it next Sunday. And the Lord said, no, you won't. You're just making an excuse. You're being deceived. You're deceiving yourself. Or I'm okay. You know, I, 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 I do what's right. I, you know, I, I go to church. I read my Bible. I listen to that. Yeah, so did I. I even taught a Sunday school class. You see, the devil is out to deceive you because... Are you listening? You have wrong perception. What you need to have today is a perception of God's Word. And when you do, you'll not sin against the Lord. God will help you to overcome the devil. Here's why. Are you listening? Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. The Holy Spirit lives within you as a believer if you're saved. Now, if you're not saved, you don't have that Holy Spirit to keep you from making the wrong decisions. Because if you walk in the Spirit, Galatians 5, 16 says, you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, let me ask you a question. Are you being deceived? Only you can answer that question. But let me say this. God wants to give you the wisdom to see if you are being deceived. So ask him for that wisdom today. Wisdom is looking at things from God's perspective. Wisdom is knowing what's right to do and doing it. So do what God wants you to do today. Would you close your eyes and bow your head with me, please? Every head bowed and every eye closed. Deception comes because of wrong perception. How do you look at the Word of God today? How do you look at what Jesus has to say to your life personally? Do you see yourself as a lost sinner? Jesus said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
Do you see yourself as a right type of Christian living the way the Bible teaches us to live? What is it that Satan is deceiving you about today? Father in heaven, I pray that you would take your word, drive it home to each one of our hearts because there's not a soul in this room or those who are watching by means of internet that is not deceived is how we respond to that deception by believing a lie or taking and believing the truth. That's what happened to Eve. She believed the lie rather than believing what God's word had said. So I pray for that person that's here this morning that's not saved. I'm praying that they will turn their heart to you and repent of sin and receive Jesus Christ as a Savior. I pray for every Christian here that they will examine their hearts by the Word of God and ask themselves, what do I need to make right with God? What do I need to do to obey what God has said? May thy will be done. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? Doc, what are we singing this morning? 617. 617 in your hymn books. If God's speaking to your heart in some way today, Brother Ed's going to be standing up here at the front. If you'd like a counselor to talk with you, to help you, maybe in some area of your life or pray with you, please let him know. If you need to be saved, you come and let us have a counselor talk with you. If you need to come and rededicate your life, you come, you come and be obedient to the Lord. If you need to be baptized, you come present yourselves a candidate for baptism or church membership. But let God have his way in your life. Would you